Hello and welcome to Cornish Walking Trails. Today we're in Mevergizzi. Oh, Ron! Yeah! Oh. <laughs> you join us today, we're leaving the car park here at Mevergizzi. Yeah, we're doing a four mile walk today. I don't know, you've looked it up. We'll four. check. <laughs> it's four or four and a half miles, I can't remember. Something like that. We're going to go down and have a wander around the harbour first and then do our walk. Okay. Our walk today comes from Shortish Walks, Truro to Loo. It's walk number seven, Mevergizzi and Chapel Point, four and a half miles. Mevergizzi is a popular tourist harbour here in Cornwall. Nice and all still. I got caught out, I've had to buy an extra top, I was cold. Yeah, car parks are still <laughs> quite busy. Um, if you come into Mevergizzi, I would definitely park in one of the car parks. Oh, you've see. got to. The streets are ridiculously yeah, narrow. It's, it's narrow. like it's narrow, isn't it? That's right. So we've just paid £6 for all day. Our ward lock book from the 1960s describes Mevergizzi like this. Since the advent of motor vehicles, Mevergizzi has grown from an old world fishing village into a popular resort for summer visitors. Its narrow streets and devious alleyways, with cottages perched at crazy angles, remain as relics of the days when pilchard same fishery and smuggling were its main activities. get the impression that there's still lots of fish caught here today. We've seen a few boats coming in and out, haven't we? Yeah. Busy, aren't they? Loaded up with fish. So that was main industry, wasn't it? Pilchard yeah. fishing and... Um, Sort them down, sell them to Italy. Yeah. Brilliant. Delicacy. What are you doing? Can you imagine the reaction on the guy's face who'd been spending all day reconcreting this path here, Sarah? But... <laughs> Someone's been busy. They're all over this as well, look. <laughs> I think that's a great big fat heavy seagull. I do too. <laughs> like that one down there, look. <laughs> Had too many fish. Parts of Mevergizzi are meant to have dated back to the 1400s, that sort of era, down near the Fountain Inn. Same litter. Oh yeah, okay. Height as seagulls, look, Andrew. <laughs> well, do you know that's actually reminded me, Sarah? Oh. Well, I was told. I don't know. I think this is true. Mevergus was the first town in Cornwall to have electricity, <laughs> but it actually had electricity before it had proper plumbing. Yeah, Andrew. <laughs> Seen these houses? Brilliant, aren't they? They're just like part of the rock. <laughs> Grabbed every last inch of space, haven't they? Yeah. yeah. Oh, we'll, we'll come out a bit. It'll be fine. It won't bang the reds. No. It'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that, amazing. I didn't expect you could build that today. We start our walk from Mevergizzi Harbour at the toilets on the south side of the harbour head up some steps and turn left following the road. After a couple hundred metres, turn right up a driveway beside Honeycomb House. On the street, turn right and shortly left by a public footpath sign into a field. Okay, so we've left Mother's Gizzy. Notice anything different? On our own. <laughs> no, it's so busy back there. 
Anyway, we've come up over a hill and we're now going down towards, where are we going? It says Asher Road, continue ahead a short distance before turning right down a drive to Penwarn, an isolated and reputedly haunt haunted. Haunted? You didn't tell me it was haunted. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's reputedly haunted. I don't want to go down there. <laughs> By the one-handed Karoo. The what? Yeah, I'll tell you about it. Okay, do I have to go down there now? Only if you're brave. Mm-hmm. Have you seen the roof line on that? Oh, I was going to film, yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's a bit wavy, isn't it? Yeah, it is actually, isn't it? You can tell that is old though, can't you? Yeah. yeah, so yeah, 16th century, I think. All the windows are different shapes, aren't they? Yeah. Old book, Sarah. History of Cornwall. Oh, I recognise that. <laughs> That's my great granddad. It's from 1880. Yes. It tells me in here, it says, Penwarn was the inheritance of the brave John Carew, called the one-handed Carew, a son of Richard Carew, the historian of Cornwall. He lost his right hand by a cannon shot at the siege of Ostend in 1601 and returned to his quarters in the evening, held out the shattered limb in his left hand, saying, this is the hand that cut the pudding in the morning. <laughs> he afterwards okay. used a wooden hand with joints, which is still preserved. Wow. So they say it's reputedly haunted. Yes. <laughs> I'm just putting two and two together. Oh, so you don't know it's him in there? No, I don't, but um, it's supposed to be haunted. So wow. yeah, if you do see a, a one-handed spirit, that could be <laughs> that could be the ghost of John. Going like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Beautiful house. Careful. What? Wow, you've Boo. seen that programme Ghost. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> I was gonna say you've seen that programme Ghosts, they don't only come out at night, do oh, they? Oh no. We're always on the watch. Look at that. Oh, it's so pretty, isn't it? Amazing building. Well, that's interesting architectural detail, isn't it? As time has gone by, they've closed up those windows on the stairs, look. Oh, yeah. To allow for the roof extension over the single storey. So the bit on the right must be the older bit. Still got a wonky roof. Very wonky. I think you would have fixed that, wouldn't you? <laughs> no, it's part of its character. There we go, you can see the sea again. Never far from it on this walk then. So that John Carew then, Sarah, yes. had his arm, or his hand, shot off by a cannon in 1601. Careless. So he had a prosthetic hands made out of wood, and it's one of the earliest recorded prosthetic hands, apparently. It rings a bell with me, where have we seen one? What, prosthetic hand? Yeah, that sort of era. I think it was at Coteal, you know. What's that for then, sir? Somebody lost their arm, so they built them an artificial arm, and they could still hold the reins by moving the gadgets behind and go into battle. Right, so that's the same sort of era, so that's quite, quite a thing to produce at that sort of time. So can you imagine, right, so he wants this prosthetic hand, wooden hand to be made, so he, he, gives a, he, he calls a carpenter up, on the phone, oh, 1601. Yeah. Should we replicate this? <laughs> Shows him the x-ray. Right. right. All right, so knock on the door. <laughs> All right. Well, hello, Bert. Thanks for coming over. Right, sir. Right, right my lord. Well, I got this job for you, Bert. What's that? Well, I need you to make me something. Wouldn't you be posh? It's my posh voice. <laughs> I need you to make me something. Here, what's that? Well, what do you think I want you to make me? I have no idea, my lord. Well, you're a carpenter. Something out of wood. <laughs> That'll do. <laughs> oh God's sake. You, what do you want? Another table or another chair? No, I want you to make me a hand. A hand? Yeah. What for? No, hang on. Stop. I've never made a hand before. Can yeah. you show me what you want it to look like? And I go, right. I'll draw it for you. And then I'll go, I'll <laughs> right handed. <laughs> that's, the, that's the gag, right? So we're right, right, okay. It's all right, I've got it, I've got it. <laughs> this time. <laughs> Here's Sarah. Yes. That John Carew. Yeah. Right, got back, back from Battle of Ostend, 1601. Right, decides he needs a new hand. New hand. 
So, so, so he decides to get hold of the local carpenter, Bert. Do you want to role play this? <coughs> right, you be Bert, I'll be John. All right. All right, here we go. So he decides to give him a ring. All right, so they're going to give you a ring now, all right? Oh, hang on, I, I can't, can I? <laughs> Phone's not being invented and I've only got one hand. I can't. Right, that's not going to work. All right, so you sent a message down to the village and you've come up to see me. So you're at the door, all right? So knock, knock on the door then. Come in! Right, my lord. Oh, hello, Bert. I'm glad you've come up to see me. I need you to make something for me. Oh, what's that then? Well, what do you think? Oh, table? No. Chairs? No. We I need, don't know. I need a new hand. How am I going to do that? What's it look like? Well, <laughs> I'm glad you said that. I'll draw it for you. Oh! Yeah. Oh, hang on, I can't, I'm right-handed. <laughs> oh. <laughs> How does your brain work? <laughs> what, what brain? <laughs> Nobody went. It doesn't work, does it? No! <laughs> right. Oh, for heaven's sake! Seriously? Hang on. Yeah, what, I know. I'm holding the camera. I've only got one hand, remember? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> How's that chair coming along? now past a mill building and going over a little stream here it's actually a road i don't think it's going to be very busy though just littering the road so there's one or two steep hills in cornwall and every time we hit one we always say is this as steep as talon's bay what yeah. do you think Talent Bay is steep, but so this, this, uh, this is on a par, but um, I like it because we're now about to go around the corner and my brain's telling me we're going to go downhill. Ah, oh, it's still going uphill. <laughs> oh, well, my brain's got wrong. <laughs> and the view just opens up in front of you, Andrew. High up, isn't it? Very high. Well, yeah, it's going to be high after that stanking great stank, wasn't it? A stanking great stank. Stonking great stank. Stonking great stank. <laughs> the Dragon Barton. That's a promising sign. That's where we should be going. Converted now to holiday accommodation. Oh, wow. It is rather nice. So we're now somewhere called Old Walls and the instructions tell us to go through somebody's garden. Yeah, knock on their door and ask for a cup of tea. <laughs> One day you're going to do that, aren't you? Yeah. Old Walls, there we are. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I don't think we are going through their garden anymore. I think they might have redirected it a little bit. Little doggy. Hello, little doggy. Yet again, you can see the sea. We're heading all the way down to the coast now. Beautiful beach. Spelt C O L O N A. Colona, Colonna. I think only a local person to Mevagizzi would probably know exactly how you pronounce that. Deserted today, look. Gentle wave breaking, just lapping. Smells so fresh. Beautiful.
I quite fancy just taking a break. We've walked probably two thirds of the way now. So it'd be nice just to chill for 20 minutes or so. Maybe find some sea glass. Looks like the right sort of beach. You're an annoying doggy, mate. Spotting sea glass. <laughs> just fogged up my lens. There's a bit there. Move. Yes, I wish I could train you to find sea glass. Yeah, go find your daddy. No! Lost it, it's gone. <gasps> Did it? Well done. Hooray! A big thank you to everybody that watched and commented the sea glass video that we put out recently. Very kind of you. So if you've wandered around Mevagizzi Harbour and looked towards Goran Haven, you will have seen these three properties in silhouette with the pine trees, they're quite distinctive. And as I look that way, I'll show you in a minute, I can see Mevagizzi. Absolutely beautiful house, isn't it? Gorgeous, aren't they? There's actually three different properties out here right on the headlands. Um, did you know, so they were built in the early 1930s and they were built in an arts and crafts style. And there was a plan at the time to build more, but it all got waylaid because of the start of the Second World War and it never ever happened. And the architect that created these properties, he died when he was about 70. And he died in a really sad way because um, he had had a cataract operation and it didn't quite work and he was partially oh, no. blinded. And he was out walking on the cliff tops oh, no. near here. No. Yeah, and he, and he went over the edge <gasps> and he drowned. Oh, tragic. Yeah. He's left a wonderful legacy though, hasn't he? Amazing properties. More than most of us can say. Yeah. <laughs> so another interesting fact about these properties, they were included in part of the plot in Daphne du Maurier's last successful book, The House on the Strand, which came out in the late 60s, the time of hallucinogenic drugs, which was a plot twist. Wow, is it? For the main character to meet people in Cornwall from earlier centuries. Really? Yeah. Ah. One of whom was Otto Bedruggen, who... Oh, it's the same name as that farm. Do you think it was something? Oh yeah, when we walked yeah. through one, that the Drug and Barton. So okay. perhaps this house and the other house were inspiration for Daphne du Maurier. Well, she liked to do that, didn't she? Yeah. She took inspiration from all of the surroundings and she, I think she incorporated some truths into it as well as a lot of fiction. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Very good. come to the village of, was it Port, Port Mellon? Yeah, well my granddad's book actually, that 1880 book, yeah. has it as two separate words. Port and Mellon, P-O-R-T-H as in cove yeah. or beach, yeah. and Mellon, M-E-L-L-Y-N. Okay, but the spelling is now different, isn't it? Yeah. Port, P-O-R-T, <laughs> yeah. M-E-L-L-O-N. Yeah. They've changed it, haven't they? Wow, you know you're in somewhere special when you see houses like this, don't you? Your Andrew's fancy, we could have a bit geek. Brand new, isn't it? It's yeah, a bit, isn't it? yeah. Goodness me. Yeah. Oh my goodness me. Do you not think that looks a bit like an office, though? Yeah, it's very industrial, isn't it? Yeah. I don't know that it says homely, cosy, and welcoming to me. You're not selling it to me? No. Go on, do you do like a state agent's pitch? Why would someone want to buy this house, Sarah? For the views. If I was a consumer and I was interested in buying this, <laughs> I'd be saying to you, yeah, but I'm a bit worried about coastal erosion. <laughs> can, you knock, I, can you knock something off for me, please? And I would be saying there's a lot of plate glass cold. <laughs> Do 
you think just one person lives in there? Crikey, it looks like it's going to take off, doesn't it? A Thunderbird's house. It's incredible. <laughs> Have you spotted something you like now? Yeah, I think I like that one over there. And I'm guessing it's the one perched on the end, the old Victorian style, Edwardian style, double fronted, nice green lawn. Am I right? Yeah, lovely, isn't it? I like that too. Beware of waves. Putting two and two together, we got seaweed all over the road. Shutters it's on all the old properties. It, yeah. yeah, I reckon it does. They are the clues, that with the road sign. Final clue is that curved seawall to make the wave go back on itself. Well, that's the theory anyway. And the pub's got shutters as well. I reckon it comes crashing in here. That's confirmed it. There's actually seaweed, flecks of seaweed on that house. So. Why have we got a track going down to the beach? Do you know? It must have been for hauling things off the beach, do you reckon? Yeah. Maybe hauling boats off, perhaps? It's quite unusual, isn't it? Yeah. If you know, put it in the comments. We'll How fascinating. To, we'll have to find out when we go home. Do some research. From Port Mellon, the route continues to follow the coast path so it joins the road towards Mevagizzi. If we look here, we got past the pub over there. Got to go past the pub. Past the pub. Oh. Past the pub. Not. Hang on. I think we've done this joke before. Not go in the pub and have a drink, but past the pub. Sale. Yeah, better film it quick before it's scattered down and replaced with one swanky new build. I'd probably keep it like that, I reckon. You would? Well, I would, just to annoy the neighbours. <laughs> or Captain Ivy. Yeah. Our walk today comes from Shortish Walks, Truro to Loo. It's walk number seven, Mevagazi and Chapel Point, four and a half miles. Quick look at the map. We start here in Mevagazi by the harbour, climb up towards Penwall Manor, cross fields, down to the Dragon Farm, and then return to the coast path all the way back to Mevagazi. We've arrived back at Mevagazi just in time. The sun is setting, it's getting dark. So quick sum up, what was your best part of the walk? Oh, for me, I think it was finding the supposedly haunted farmhouse of One Hand Karoo. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first, yeah. The less said, the better. The map was very handy. The instructions were very handy. What, one handy? <laughs> Everything worked a treat. What would you score it? Uh, for me, it's a 9 out of 10. Yeah, what, just because the book can't score that extra point for history? Yeah, so there is an absence of history within that book. You've got, got to do your own research or watch a YouTube video about it. Yeah. <laughs> 9 out of 10, brilliant, I agree. <laughs> to help us grow our channel, please subscribe and consider supporting us on Patreon.